Welcome to the British Columbia Center for Disease Control Shellfish Map Advanced Topics video. The purpose of this video is to describe the more advanced features of the shellfish map as well as how to better interpret some of the more complicated data shown in the map. The search tool, which is the magnifying glass icon at the top left, has the basic functionality to search for towns, cities, and places, but there are ways to search for specific areas relevant to shellfish harvesting. Using the search bar, you can find specific biotoxin subareas, aquaculture sites, and reserve lands. Searching for a subarea is as simple as typing the area number and the subarea number separated by a dash. For aquaculture sites and reserve lands, simply search for the name of the area and you will see the search results organized by layer. Searching for Nanus Bay, for example, will bring up the several aquaculture sites located there, as well as a reserve area called Nanus. Let's do that search again, but this time clicking on the reserve land called Nanus. Next, we'll start with a description of the layers which are available in the map. Most of these layers are taken from open data sources. Links to them can be found on the Sources tab or described on the host page of the map. In the first section of the Layer Control Tools, there are three base maps available. Gray, Imagery, and Streets. Gray is the least distracting of the base maps, so this is the default base map. The Imagery base map can provide valuable context and location information and so can the street maps. In the additional layers section, of, there are three layers which become available to you as you zoom into a small area of the map. Reserve areas are First Nation reserve lands shown in tan located along the coast of BC. There are no inland reserve areas shown on this map. The parks layer, shown in green, includes all of the national and provincial parks in BC. The aquaculture leases, shown in blue, are areas where commercial shellfish growing and harvesting is licensed to take place. For each of these layers, simply click on the feature to identify the name of the area. Sea surface temperature measurement locations are located along the Salish Sea, coastal Vancouver Island, and northern BC areas where shellfish harvesting occurs. Clicking on one of these spots will display the water temperature measurements at the location over the last two weeks according to data from NASA satellites. These measurements are free of diurnal variation. In other words, the temperature is not affected by nighttime lows or daytime highs. Next, we'll cover water quality layers. There are three layers related to water quality. One to show outfalls where water may be contaminated. The second to show where you can find pump out services for your vessel. And the third shows water test results in shellfish growing areas. Wastewater outfalls, shown as discharge pipe icons, are municipal effluent discharge locations. They include wastewater treatment plants, septic sources, and overflow discharges. Pump out locations, shown as boat icons, are service stations for boaters to remove sewage and gray water from their holds. BC CDC recommends every boater use these services to keep our marine waters and environment clean. Prices and hours are shown when clicking on the locations. Generally, there are sanitary closures or prohibited areas around outfall and pump out locations. The water drop icon shows water quality testing locations, 
monitored by Environment and Climate Change Canada. Because there are thousands of locations in BC where water quality is tested, the map must be zoomed in to a very small area to make this layer available. When clicking on one of these locations, detailed water quality testing data is displayed. For more information on how to interpret these values, please visit the following sites. Links are provided in the video description. Shellfish closure types are covered briefly in the shellfish map introduction video. So here we will expand on that topic and look at the relationship between water quality and the closures. If you zoom into a specific area like seashell and turn on wastewater and pump out layers, you can see that sanitary and prohibited areas where all shellfish harvesting is prohibited are impacted by the presence of populated areas, wastewater outfalls, and pump out stations, in addition to other factors which can contaminate shellfish. Clicking on one of these areas will bring up all the relevant details of each of the closures active at this location. You can see that here, there is a sanitary prohibited and biotoxin closure relevant to this location. For more detailed information on each, click the Link to Closure Notices hyperlink and use the DFO page to search for the relevant information. The last topic covered in this video is the shellfish search bar. This tool lets you select a shellfish species you are interested in collecting and search for where it is safe to collect a given species. Some species of shellfish are safe to collect through the province. As of this recording, Manila clams, for instance, do not have active biotoxin closures in 81 areas. Other species, like gooey duck, are only safe to harvest in four areas of the province in today's search. Then there are species of shellfish which are not safe to collect anywhere along the BC coast. If you select soft shell clams, for instance, the map will not display any green areas. This means that there are no areas in BC where it is safe to harvest this species. To clear the green areas from the map, click Clear Filter. Thank you for watching this Shellfish Map Advanced Topics video. You are now ready to take advantage of all the features of the BC CDC Shellfish Map, which we hope will keep you healthy and safe while being able to enjoy the bountiful shellfish available in BC.